everyone. Um, I hope I'm audible. Welcome to today's session on Kubernetes reliability in 2024. About myself, I'm Faikan Sari, and I'm a third year undergraduate student. I'm pursuing computer science, working as an intern at Nirmata, which is a Kubernetes operations and management platform. And you will mostly find me hacking on Kubernetes, Kiborno, and I'm also a sub-project maintainer at Kubernetes, doing a couple lot of things in the upstream cloud native open source community. So as we gather here today, it is impossible to ignore the seismic shift that Kubernetes has brought into the tech world. And one recent industry trend worth mentioning here is the increasing adoption of Kubernetes in the enterprise environments across various industries. So however, with great power comes great responsibility, right? And as more organizations migrate their workloads to Kubernetes clusters, ensuring that the reliability and the stability of these clusters has become even more critical than ever before. So fear not, are you all ready to dive deep into the wild world of Kubernetes reliability? And hold on to your hearts today as we have a very special guest who's not, not just riding the wave, but also making waves in the Kubernetes troubleshooting scene. Join us, joining us is the co-founder of the ultimate problem-solving sidekick for Kubernetes, none other than the brain behind Komodor. So hello, ETL. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Would you like to tell our viewers more about yourself? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the great introduction. My name is ETL Schwartz, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Komodor. And my background is mainly around backend and infrastructure. So I worked at eBay as a backend infrastructure engineer. And then a couple of uh, like smaller startups where I saw how it is like to take something small and scale it into like a quite massive scale. And I fall in love with like, I don't know, Kubernetes seven years ago. I really like the platform. I think it's a great technology. Uh, but like you said uh, yourself, like with the popularity and the usage of Kubernetes, a lot of things start to emerge. And that is the reason that me and uh, my co-founder, uh, Ben Ophiri, uh, started Commodore. Uh, our goal in life is basically to make Kubernetes simple or simpler to use. And we have to say like Kubernetes for humans and not mm -hmm. only for like super experts that know everything. Uh, Kubernetes is becoming the heart of modern IT organization. And our goal is to help every part inside of the organization to utilize Kubernetes to the max. So uh, super happy to be here and talk a bit about uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, that's an awesome introduction. So. Commodore, as the introduction says, Kubernetes for humans, for developers, for cluster operators, and all these people who are, you know, end users and everything. And we have all that in Commodore. So as today we are talking about Kubernetes reliability in the year 2024, this could be a new term for a few folks here. So what does Kubernetes reliability actually means? And especially can you cover the importance of Kubernetes reliability in today's tech landscape to set the stage for the discussion? Yeah, sure. So when we say Kubernetes reliability, I think it's mainly saying, okay, I'm a company, like a young company that is now, like I'm an old company that is now migrating my on-prem into Kubernetes, or I'm a cloud native company that was built around Kubernetes. Kubernetes has a tendency to start very, very easy, but on the other side, like you said, like yourself, like it's getting complicated very, very fast. And when we're talking about the reliability aspects of it, we're talking about like three different tech pillars, I would say. The first one is around the infrastructure itself, like problems that may arise in the infrastructure layer. And this is things like um, nodes that are under pressure or not working correctly. Things around the PVC, the load balancer, all of like the, the basics of Kubernetes. We have another layer, which is the application layer. And things like application that is simply down or getting a lot of restarted, or CPU that is throttled, or on the other hand, HPA, which is like the Kubernetes automated way of like scaling application that reaches the limit. So we have a lot of issues also, both in the infra and the application layer. I would say that the, the trick around Kubernetes is that the infrastructure and the application are very much like intertwined. So when you have an issue, when you have a problem, it's not that clear if it's an application issue or an infrastructure issue, or in how do I solve it? The third thing that we, we say when we talk about Kubernetes reliability, it's more around the housekeeping and Kubernetes hygiene. Things like um, deprecated APIs or cluster upgrades or Docker images that are that might be like outdated. 
So in order to make sure that Kubernetes is working good, you need to work in it all of the time, all of the time. And that in turn can be very costly. And we'll say that things like a Kubernetes, right? And policies enforcement is also part of the reliability. In the end of the day, we enable also our customers that to utilize certain kind of policies to make sure that the cluster runs and operate in a reliable way. So Kubernetes reliability is quite complex, right? But in the end of the day, it's around first of all that time. Secondly, around the democratization. Right? How can I make sure that not only that the system is reliable, but different parts of the organization can utilize it in an efficient way without needing to escalate too much to like other teams and so on. Wow, that's great. So like you said, there are several layers in Kubernetes from the infrastructure layer and the application layer. And we have to cover the problems in both these layers. We need to housekeep in Kubernetes. That is something what Commodore does. And managing the cluster upgrades, deprecated things, removing all of those things. This is such a huge part. And that is all Kubernetes reliability is all about. And I think we know, now know how important it is as well. So no wonder all this is a game changer. I also wanted to include, I have heard a lot about this dual pillars of Commodore's approach, like the reliability management pillar, which acts as a mission controller for the cluster operators, and the guided troubleshooting pillar, which is a reactive function for all the end users and developers. So can we have a quick overview on these two things before we jump into more technical details? Yeah, like in, in, in Commodore, we see two types of personas that are using Kubernetes. The first one is the platform team or SRE team or infrastructure team. And this team is responsible for serving other people inside the organization. They are in charge that Kubernetes is reliable, that it's easily audited, that have all of the right permissions are being set. And those are the cluster operators. And for them, we have the ability to streamline the fleet management and the cluster management of like a lot of clusters or multi-cloud environment or on-prem and multi-cloud. So for them, we give tools around cluster management and like a proactive approach to detection and resolving of issues. On the other hand, we have the end users, which are the developers. Those don't really live inside Kubernetes. Like a developer, most of his time is in the ID, writing code, writing features, uh, fixing bugs, and so on. But for them, we do try to do a shift left, meaning they should be responsible for solving issues. And in turn, most of the things that they do inside Kubernetes is troubleshooting. And our goal is to take the troubleshooting experience and make it into something that is not scary at all. And that even someone who is not an expert can take a problem inside Kubernetes and solve it end to end without needing to escalate to the platform team or the operators and so on. So we have two main personas inside Kubernetes and Commodore try to empower both of those sides and also to connect between between them, like being a bridge between the operation and the developers. Okay, that's awesome. So like you said, the infrastructure team and the troubleshooting team doing all these things, two main personas, it's so exciting. Um, no wonder it's entirely a game changer. And I think this also relates to Commodore's famous customer, Lacework, which is also a leading name in cloud security and how they shared that they managed to reduce their mean time to resolution by a staggering 70% and all thanks to Commodore. So that's awesome. I really need to take help from Commodore's reliability management pillar next time I break something into production. Mm -hmm. um, with that in mind, I would love to see what Commodore looks like and how is it reducing the Kubernetes complex complexity. So can you get us through it? Yeah, obviously I can and I'll try yeah. to share and I hope it will work. Share screen, share screen. Window, one second. Sorry, sorry. Entire scrum tab. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. Can you guys see? Uh, like, can you see, Odi? Yeah, yeah great. I can see your screen. Okay, great. Sorry, I can see you now when I'm sharing. So in Commodore, we have the ability to see all of the clusters that we have across regions, across cloud providers, across different flavors of Kubernetes. And in one single screen, you are able to see all of the different workloads that you have. And we aggregate this again, cross cluster, cross regions, everything in one single place. And we also have the ability to view everything from a bird eye view of the cluster operators, meaning all of the different clusters that I have. And for every cluster, we have three kinds of scores, maintenance, risks, and cost. 
and we have the ability, first of all, to understand the uh, score of each one of those and also to be able to improve it and fix it and remediate it. So in Commodore, for every kind of problem, we try to give three things like what happened, why did it happen, and what you should do now in order to remediate it. So on the maintenance part, we have the end-of-life uh, Kubernetes version, for example, and this in turn allows cluster operators to make sure that their clusters are always reliable and are always up to date. And in this example, this is my current version. This is the Kubernetes GA. And I said I can do an upgrade because two high violations require attention. And those violations, I can click on the button and see exactly what APIs are being deprecated in this new version and in turn allow me even to edit it and to solve the issue. So in a, like a couple of clicks, we were able to understand, first of all, what is happening in terms of the versions and like, a, like maintenance of the cluster, Helm shards deprecated and deprecated APIs. And on the other hand, really to be able to pinpoint the exact thing that we need to fix and how to fix it and how to solve it. On the other side, we have the node pressure. Node pressure is basically the infrastructure that is saying that things are not working correctly. And we say that there is a node pressure. And the reason for that, the reason for the node pressure in that case is a noisy neighbor. And again, this is what I talked about earlier, this layer between the application and the infrastructure. And in this case, we have one single service that is killing other services on top of that cluster. And we can see the impact. We can see the memory footprint. And we can also see the Commodore recommendation, which is basically to set the memory limit into another number. Uh, another example here is our throttled containers and cost optimization. How can I find the right balance between cost and reliability? So in Commodore, you are able to understand all of the different risks, if it's an infrastructure or application risk, and also to keep the cluster hygiene over time, cluster upgrades, and so on. Another feature that we have that is actually based on top of Kiverno is the policies. And this in turn allows us to set the relevant policies for every cluster inside the organization. So not only that we are able to detect issues, but we are also able to help you to set the right guardrails in place, meaning make sure that the cluster is operating correctly at any point of time. And we also have the ability to configure the R backend policies through Commodore. So for cluster operator, this is a one-stop shop for people who manages a lot of clusters and need some help with their fleet management or the cross-cluster or the hybrid cluster use case. So until now, I talked mainly around the cluster operation side. But now let's talk a bit for developers. For a developer, having something like 172 services is simply too much. You can't really do something with that, and he doesn't really care. A developer usually cares about 10 to 20 services. And in Commodore, we have the workspace concept. And a workspace is something like a Helm release or maybe a label of a specific team in Kubernetes or maybe an Argo application. And this in turn allows us to scope down to narrow the scope that a developer needs to know in order to utilize the system. So we have the resource inventory. And in this case, we have only like eight different services. And four of them are currently not working as expected. Four of them are currently unhealthy. And I can click on the button. And what I'm going to see here is the Commodore timeline. And the Commodore timeline is basically everything that happened for that specific service over the last 24 hours. It can be more and it can be even less. And when I say everything, I really mean everything. So we have here custom event, and we have here the example. We have a page duty alert, a data dog monitor, a change that happened, and availability, which means the service didn't work as expected. And when I say talk about deploy, we have here a deploy that failed inside Kubernetes. We have the reason, we have the explanation, we have the logs, and we also have like the relevant changes that happen inside the cluster. So I can click here and I can see the exact changes that happen, both in the service, in the config map or secrets, and inside the GitHub. So imagine that you are not an expert or like you are in a platform engineer trying to help developers. With Commodore, you have all of this context, everything you need in one single place without needing to jump between tools and becoming an expert yourself. But sadly, this service is still red, right? So let's try and figure out together why is it red and what can we do in order to fix it. So I can click on this. And this is basically the Commodore guided troubleshooting that we talked about. And this includes everything you need in order to really solve the problem. We have the Commodore Insight helping us as there was a deploy 20 seconds prior to this issue. We found three suspicious log lines and the blast thread. This, this issue impacted three other dependent services. 
I can click on the investigate button and I have here the out of memory kill and some explanation around what is out of memory. I can go and see the dependencies, which are basically how does this service connects to other services across the system. And the important thing to say is on the left side, we have different steps. And as a developer, all I need to do in order to fix and solve the issue is to go over all of these steps one by one by one in order to fix and solve the issue. Again, like what happened? Why did it happen? And what should I do now in order to remediate it? So I will skip this for now. And now I'm going to get the Commodore logs. The cool thing about the Commodore logs is we have an integration together with OpenAI. And in this integration, we dump down the logs for our users, for the people who are not an expert. And we try to give the root cause and a possible solution. In this case, the root cause is a variable called API rate limit, which is larger than the acceptable max size. And a possible solution would be to check if a specific configure validation has recently changed. I can skip this for now. And I can see correlated deploys that happen just prior to that specific issue. And in that case, again, I can see the changes. I can see the changes from the GitHub perspective. And I can also see the possible root cause, which is a change in the config map. Now I can do a review and rollback and simply solve the problem. So even without being an expert, we were able to diagnose the, the problem, understand it, understand the root cause, and even solve the problem. And this, in turn, allowed the developers to really take ownership over their services on one hand, while allowing the cluster operators to be in control over the system and overall system healthiness on the other. It's important to say for that different tech scenarios will result in different step, steps, because we know how to tie it down. So here we have like a different example, and I won't go too much into it but again, like different steps that we are having. That's like the basic of Homero. I won't go too much into the cost optimization where we basically allow customers to save money on top of Kubernetes while also making sure that their system stays reliable. But I will say that in Commodore, again, our goal in life is to make sure that the operation side is as simple as possible and as easy to use as possible. I'm sorry, I'm, I should be in the namespace. And here we'll be able to see like the common recommendation around our connection between cost and performance. So with that, I think I will stop demoing. And yeah, that is amazing. So impressive. So many magical tools in Commodore that I just learned about. So just for a quick recap, for every problem we have Commodore, <laughs> what happens, why happens, and what should we do to remediate it? Everything is there with Commodore. There is information for cluster operators. There is also information for developers. And you just need to go through simple clicks and edit it, solve the replications, violations, and everything just on the go. You have everything at Commodore. Uh, at Commodore, we just don't find the violation, but we also see how can we fix it. Like your, you just showed us the node pressure violation and uh, issue. So we'll also definitely get uh, on the cost uh, cost optimization and all the other topics in the next part of today's webinar. I really loved everything that we had for developers. Like you showed us the Commodore's timeline where everything that has happened to the Commodore service is monitored, all the changes are monitored, everything about the deployment failures, is everything is logged. And uh, the troubleshooting guide was amazing. So th these like simple steps to follow, and you can go through introduction, dependency, check the Commodore logs, where you can find the root cause and also the possible solutions, like the rollback service, which makes things so much easier for developers to take the ownership of all these things. So all this was like really impressive, and I'm so <laughs> astonished by this magical tool. I wanted to ask you, if Commodore was not there, then for this issue, what would a SRE do? Uh, I will okay. say like two, two things. Like if Commodore doesn't exist, usually what happens is developers are unable to solve issues by themselves. And then they just escalate and escalate and escalate. And in Kubernetes, it's much easier to scale the nodes than it is to scale your SRE team. So usually developers becomes the bottleneck of the organization. And SRE like would need to go to four or five different places to stitch in all of the different things and to try to figure out in, in like in his head what went wrong. And we democratize Kubernetes for the rest of the, of the organization to use. When it comes to our capabilities of like fleet management, like there's no other tool in the industry that allows cluster operators to get so many control on one hand, but not being too intrusive on the other. That's awesome. 
Okay, so what are some key aspects that we should consider or Commodore already considers to make Kubernetes more reliable for all the cluster operators where they can you know, proactively prevent incidents from even happening? Like, could you highlight standardization and best practices to prevent all these incidents and failed yeah. deployments? One of which was Kiverno, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think Kiverno or like your Commodore, uh, which uses a Kiverno also like behind the scenes. In the end of the day, like it's, it's like a pyramid like you need to make sure that the cluster is like for like configuring in a proper way with the right policies so the first thing that you do when you install the cluster or set up a new cluster bring bring Kiverno, bring commodore bring any tools that help you with this part of like policy enforcement then make sure that only the relevant people have the relevant permission right so we need to again like the pyramid then make sure that you have the relevant alerts in place around the infrastructure issue or application issue and application problems and then once like uh, an issue does happen, write your own manual runbooks or simply use Commodore. But it's like a pyramid where every step in the in this pyramid is like allowing you to gain better better uptime and uh, reduce MTTR and reduce the amount of escalation that you are getting. Awesome. So you explained it like a pyramid. You should have policies, but you should also have relevant people with relevant permissions, like RDSC configured, and you should also have your custom book. I think that's enough. For of uh, you know, reliability practices that cluster operators need to follow. Awesome, so we have discussed the best practices for cluster operators to make their Kubernetes cluster more reliable. Moving forward, as we might already know that Kubernetes is orchestrating, orchestrating containers, right? And we hope everything we want work as we expected, but in real world, things do not go as we hope and things fail, application crashes, and your request gets lost, network gets lost, and there's no enough requests. And there are several failure scenarios. So it is, um, as we know, Commodore is this hyper-effective troubleshooting tool. Do you have a problem-solving scenario or something that you can show us and how difficult it is to debug it? And so how does Commodore can help us to solve that issue when things just break? Yeah, I think like the troubleshooting that I like show is quite like capture it. Like we took a problem that is quite common. Someone changed something and then something else break. And I think like that's the most common thing that happens. Like ninety percent of the issues are caused with changes. Because we have the ability to be like a change log for the cluster, it's very easy to go back in time to understand the changes, to understand their impact and basically to solve the problem. So that is the the exact like view that we we I showcase around like the cluster timeline basically. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Um, yeah, if you have time in hand, it will, uh, we all know that cluster updates are essential for um, maintaining the reliability, right? And the scalability of Kubernetes environments. So how does Commodore streamline the process of upgrading the cluster and what specific features or functionality does it offer to ensure a smooth transition without actually breaking anything yeah so first of all like we know how to alert you around when the cluster is going to get the end of life and if you're running multiple like cloud providers we know how to find a relevant like, configuration for your cloud provider and then not only that we tell you that you need to upgrade we're telling you what are the steps that you need to take in order to do the upgrade if it's an add-on change or a deprecated api we got your back, so when you are going to do the upgrade, things are not going to break. You are on mute. <laughs> so, I hope I'm audible now. Yeah, so um, I think we can go through this. How can developers try or, you know, how is Commodore free for developers? Is Commodore free for developers? And how can developers use it for free? And uh, what are the benefits that Commodore has to offer? Can you show us? Yeah, so is... you, can, you can just go to appcommodore.com or search like Commodore in Google. And we have like a free forever like license, meaning you as a developer can go install a Commodore agent and use the utilize us completely free. And we have some enterprise features like bigger clusters, bigger team members, and we also have 14 days free trial. And you can also like contact me after this like uh, webinar uh, if you have any questions around the pricing or around anything else. And we are also like very strong believer in open source. We have a couple of very successful open source projects. We have the Helm dashboard, 
<coughs> that is a GUI for Helm, basically. We have Comoplane that allows customers that are very strong uh, with Crossplane. And we have uh, ValidQ that allows you to much to, to easily like manage or like help standardize like um, Kubernetes YAML files. So we have all of those three projects and also the free trial and free forever like license. Oh, that's amazing. So I hope our attend attendees just heard this point that we have a 14 days free trial going on uh, Commodore and a lot of free similar licenses. You all, you all can reach out to ETL. I think the possible means would be Twitter or LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and ask more about the pricing and everything. So as we have less time in hand and so many cool Commodore magical tools to talk about, I want to pick some really important ones. Um, can you brief our audience about how does all these uh, things, which is about reliability and scalability, all of these things helps us optimize the cost and performance at the same time? Yeah, so our claim to fame is making sure that the cluster works as expected. We see more and more as companies make costs into something very critical for the organization. And it becomes something which is really like a top line item for them. And for that, we have the ability from one hand to understand what resources are taking are like not configured correctly. And on the other hand, to give you the right request limit uh, in order to make replicas, in order to make sure that you have it aligned, meaning your system is still going to be reli like reliable, but on the other hand, you're going to save a lot of money on the compute layer. That's amazing. Uh, do you have some new features in Commodore that you would want to show us? Like, uh, I think they showed most of the things that uh, that we have, but I will say that one of the things that we're working more and more is on this energy. How can Commodore help you manage 10, 100, or even like thousands of different clusters? We have a couple of customers using Commodore for Kubernetes on edge, and those customers have thousands on thousands of clusters. So this ability in turns allow us to help both smaller organizations, but also very, very big organizations. And the main focus is like fleet management and allowing you to simplify managing a lot of clusters. That's amazing. Would you want to talk about the future capabilities and policy enforcement? Yeah, so we see more and more like users from Kiverno or also like OPA. And the goal is from one hand to visualize that and on the other and on the other side and really help you to find the right best practices across different clusters and to enforce them. So both visibility, recommendation and enforcement. All right, that sounds so that's about the possibility of this. Mm. Um, can you help how people like me, who is like a noob, can try out Commodore? If you can just get us through the website and show it, I'll also try it from my end and, and all the audience who are who have joined with us. Yeah, let's just do this. It'll be really fun. I'll try it out on my end as well. Yeah. So, like, you can simply go to Commodore. Yeah. I would also ask my audience that everyone, let's try it out on Open Commodore and let's do it together. Yeah, Let us know. That. Exactly. Yeah. I will say like, I, I'm mm -hmm. already like logged in, so it's like a bit more problematic, but all you need to do is sign up now and you're okay. going to get like a very simple user to use. And basically the installation takes between like 10 to 20 seconds. So it's super easy. And if you have like a cluster running up, it's very, really easy to use using Helm. That is amazing. I see that our audience have actually started signing up. Yes. So let's wait 30 seconds for them. By the time they can sign up, um, we can share the link to Commodore's website in the comment section. So, Yeah, I think now we can start. You can share your screen and we can see how we can actually try all these features that Commodore has to offer. Yeah, to show it again. Yeah, yeah, for all the beginners who are just excited to try Commodore in their own local clusters. Yeah, I'd say it's like quite easy. Like, like I said, like I can't show everything because I'm already logged into the platform. 
But if mm-hmm. you are in the photo.com, all you need to do is get started, okay. write your work email, right? And like I, it's it's invalid address because because I'm like a former employee. But for you, it should simply work. Okay, so if anyone is like trying it out on their side, let us know if you face any problems in the comment section. We'd love to take that up. And okay, so by the end, I really wanted to take up this question: How Commodore is different and its vision? What is its vision that separates it from all the other existing player in the Kubernetes troubleshooting space? Yeah, our, our our vision is to help organization utilize Kubernetes. And that in general means that we don't have any direct competition. Like we work very nicely with Argo CD and Datadog and New Relic and so on. And the, the what we do is basically simplify and like put all of those different things that you need in order to operate Kubernetes like professionally at scale in one place. If it's around costs, if it's around policies, if it's around RBAC, if it's around cluster management. And this is for the cluster operators. And on the other ha- side, for developers, we simplify it in a way that even a novice Kubernetes user can be self-sufficient to be empowered and to be able to solve things by himself with the right guardrails and audit in, in place. That is amazing. So we have things simplified so much for cluster operators as well as for developers. We do not have direct competitor like you mentioned, and we already work with so many other organizations and so many different projects from Argo CD and also putting in Kiborno, like you said, and all the other projects, placing RBAC policies, managing the cluster, all of these tools at one place. This is just amazing. Um, I believe Commodore also has a boot setup for NextCubeCon. Would you yeah. want us to give some of it? Yeah. yeah, come. We have like uh, we have swag. We have like prizes. We have a party. Uh, so just like come to the Commodore uh, boot in KubeCon. I'll be there, and uh, you can see like the features and things in person. That is amazing. So for our audience who is coming at KubeCon, uh, Commodore's booth will be there at KubeCon. Uh, we'll share the booth number in the comment section. Apart from this, uh, if you want swags, uh, when is the party of Commodore at KubeCon? <laughs> I'd be really excited to join that as well. And um, so the you have to join booth hashtag J18 if you want to talk more about Commodore and meet ETL Schwartz in person. I think yeah. that should be really fun. And as we come to the end of our discussion on Kubernetes reliability and troubleshooting, I would really like to extend a huge thanks to our special guest, ETL Schwartz, for sharing so many invaluable insights and magical tools and expertise with us today. And I think we have covered a lot of ground from understanding the importance of uh, reliability in Kubernetes and also explored how Commodore is actually revolutionizing the troubleshooting aspect of Kubernetes environments. So um, as we wrap up, I encourage all of you all to actually explore this further and discover how Commodore can enhance the reliability and performance of your Kubernetes infrastructure. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Until next time, I think, uh, do you have any last few words? No, I really enjoyed like uh, talking with you today. It's it's been really like a pleasure being here. We have some questions. Would you want to take them? Yeah, sure. So Kunal Verma is asking: Is there any API for Commodore? Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yes. Obviously, there's like two kinds of APIs. We have the API that allows you to take data from within Commodore and basically put it in your platform. Uh, so like a read API, REST API. On the other hand, you can also send data. To Commodore from other tools, so we know how to play with both ways, like both digesting data and also exporting data to other tools. Oh, awesome! So I think now your question was answered. We do have API. Um, awesome. Do we have any more questions? Would really love to take it. Mm-mm. That's awesome. We really had a huge audience this time. And I really want to thank everyone who has joined us here. 
and encourage you all to actually go and try out Commodore for your own local questions. So let's wrap up. Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and happy troubleshooting. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Atiya. Thanks a lot. Thanks.